A federal jury found them guilty on multiple counts, but state law allows... If a loved one were gunned down by a heavily armed mob following a devastating natural disaster, how might you respond to the notion of dozens of supporters literally applauding their killer's actions? These macabre gestures of social approval reveal the support system enjoyed by murderers and accessories to murder in post-Katrina New Orleans. I never thought 11 and a half months ago I'd be walking down the streets of New Orleans with two 38s in my pocket and a shotgun over my shoulder. It was great! It was like pheasant season in South Dakota. If it moved, oh, you shot it. That's not a pheasant. We're not in South Dakota. What's wrong with this picture? Seemed like it at the time. There's no way of knowing how many victims of mob violence lost their lives in the aftermath of the hurricane. These killings occurred as national news media disseminated false reports of street-level violence plaguing the city. In those first days after the storm, suddenly the media coverage shifted from sympathy to the people trapped on rooftops, the victims of this disaster, to portraying people as criminals, as looters, as armed gangs roving the streets, shooting at police helicopters, raping infants. We later found out those stories were false, but they were propagated by the chief of police who said that infants were being raped in the Superdome. The governor of the state of Louisiana, Kathleen Blanco at the time, said, I'm sending in National Guard troops. They're locked and loaded. They've been trained to shoot to kill, and I expect they will. On September 1st, Donnell Harrington was attacked by a mob as he and two friends proceeded towards an evacuation point in Algiers. He was left bleeding in the streets with a punctured jugular vein as his friends were shot at and chased off by an unidentified racist mob. The mob was proactively shooting at black males, deeming them looters. But before the gang violence could occur, it required a support system. We had three. They left here, one without a t-shirt, and the others full of buckshot. <laughs> and we have the t-shirt to prove it. Really? Oh yeah. What happened? We shot him. What happens in other parts of this state, I don't know about. But we don't here, care about. This but is in this our neighborhood, we take care of our own. We sent them back into wherever they came from and said, don't come back. The attack on Donnell Harrington is one instance of an unprovoked mob attack in Katrina's aftermath. Another three separate shootings, resulting in four deaths and multiple injuries, would be perpetrated by a much larger criminal enterprise than the racist mob in Algiers Point. These crimes are perpetrated by gangs not only monetarily compensated for their actions, but also armed and trained in the name of society at large. This gang wields so much unchecked power that their actions are automatically deemed justified, up to and beyond the point that their own system deems them guilty of wrongdoing. This video obtained by the I-Team is now in the hands of the FBI as part of its investigation into the New Orleans Police Department involving a death in the days following Hurricane Katrina. Henry Glover was a guy from the Algiers section of New Orleans. On September 2nd, he was shot by a New Orleans police officer. And a guy named William Tanner rescued him after he'd been shot. Me, his brother, and his brother-in-law rushed to Haven School. When we got to the area of the school, his brother yelling out, I need medical attention. My brother got shot. I had five laser sighting guns pointed to my window. The cops asked me to get out of the car, but not in that tone of voice. They kicked me two times in the um, side of my stomach, my ribs that hit me with M16 rifle on the side of my face. The same cop that hit me with the rifle had took off in the car with two flares in his pocket, and I told his brother, I wouldn't see that car no more. I had told Homeland Security guy about the story, and he verified I was telling the truth. And November the 3rd, he told me where my car was at, on Richmond Street behind the Fort District Police Station torch. And I found body fragments of the man in the back seat of this car right here. This is my white Malibu. As you see, you see the cans right on the side of what they used to ignite the car with. On the same day, Danny Brumfield Sr. was one of thousands of people outside the convention center in New Orleans. He saw uh, officers drive by with no help, no food, no water. He went running up to one police car. The police car deliberately hit him and then officers shot him in the back in front of his family. Uh, this is another case that's being investigated. Perhaps the most notorious case is Danziger Bridge. Several civilians were fleeing New Orleans east into the center of New Orleans. They were unarmed. Police rolled up, again, assuming that these, were, that these were criminals, that these were looters. 
uh, and they uh, just started firing on these unarmed civilians. When they originally got out of the van, they were dressed in shorts, t-shirts, uh, just plain shirts. Uh, they never identified themselves as being police. And to see them open fire on a small uh, group of uh, individuals, African-American individuals at the foot of the bridge, they just figured they were out to you know, go hunting and shooting and, and killing Where people. Were you with Two were killed, four were wounded including Ronald Madison, a mentally challenged man who was shot in the back by one officer. Another officer ran up and kicked and stomped on him until he was dead. In the uh, description of the medical report, the, the mother's arm was shot off, the daughter, and she testified on TV on CNN that they were going to shoot her mother again and she tried to cover her body with her body and they shot her in the back three times. Another man required a colostomy bag. But it goes beyond the killings. When senior officers came upon the scene, they realized that this would not stand up well. And so they began to, a process of fabricating evidence, inventing witnesses, planting bullets, planting guns. They arrested Lance Madison, Ronald Madison's brother, and charged him under false charges of shooting at officers, held him in jail for several months. Uh, they had secret meetings over the following weeks to conspire and get their stories straight. And none of this came to light for years even though the, the Madison family and others were trying against a wall of silence to get these stories out. Lohman admitted he helped cover up for seven fellow officers. Federal officials say Lohman allowed an investigator to plant a clean gun under the bridge to make it look like the victim shot at officers first, even though he knew they were in fact unarmed. So definitely there's a feeling that, that this is an apartment with a long history of corruption. The police chief from 1994 to 2002, Richard Pennington, ended up firing or disciplining or transferring more than uh, 500 officers during his time. Uh, he, he worked with the federal government to try and root out corruption. And even many of the observers from that time said he only began to scratch the surface of a notoriously corrupt department. Presently, we're still faced with the uphill fight with the judicial system. Okay, when the uh, indictments were handed out to the police on December 28th of 05, they were allowed to turn themselves in January 2nd of 06 <clears throat> so that they could have this time to spend with their families. The second thing that the judge did that I feel was incorrect was that he provided bail for first degree murder. Uh, nowhere in the United States has anyone provided bail for first degree murder. These individuals were provided bail. One, was, one of the officers quit and was allowed to move to, da to Houston, Texas to leave the state. And, uh, and that's unheard of also. They, they were supposed to be uh, on, ho on house arrest and they shouldn't have left, he shouldn't have gone anywhere. Third, they were allowed to go back to work uh, as police in, in the police department, which is, uh, which is really a, a tragedy to the public. Uh, they fired police for second degree battery, let alone for being charged with first degree murder. A federal appeals court has tossed out the convictions of two former NOPD officers tried for shooting and killing Henry Glover in the days after Hurricane Katrina. The announcement of that news shocked the Glover family. That has the police associations very happy. Henry Glover's mother couldn't believe the news. I took sick when I heard it today, you know. I just can't go through this no more. But the police associations praise the ruling as a step in the right direction. I think uh, it's the right decision. And attorneys representing six officers associated with the Danziger Bridge shootings have filed a new motion for a new trial in that case. And they are citing what they call, quote, a secret public relations campaign against the defendants as the reason. That's a reference to online posts that were made in recent years. Despite convictions in the Danziger Bridge case, some former NOPD officers are still set to collect more than $2,000 a month in pension payments. Defense attorney Frank DeSalvo, who represented Kenneth Bowen during the Danziger trial and represents the Police Association of New Orleans, believes those who want to take the pensions away are basing that opinion on emotions. You got to look at these things objectively and reasonably and take emotion and take it out of out of the picture. We cannot expect the system to change until we all refuse to be the support system for those who wrong others. Do you think that the verdicts tonight, uh, Mrs. Glover, vindicates Henry Glover? The reporter who asked this awful question attributing guilt to a murder victim ought to be ashamed of himself. The neighbors of racist vigilante mobs ought to be ashamed of themselves. The fraternal order of police criminal supporters ought to be ashamed of themselves. And the drones who applaud murderers simply for being their colleagues should also be ashamed of themselves. Or perhaps it's simply business as usual in Louisiana. 
where you're either too traumatized or dumbfounded to be shocked by institutionally sanctioned violence.